People are pissed about Helldivers 2. And we may never get a spiral or crash game ever again. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Kyle, and this is Dez, and we are doing the gaming news. I'm Dez. Our first story today, we got Helldivers 2 is getting review bombed on Steam because of the anti-cheat software, making it so people can just scooch on in and steal all your business from inside of your computer if you got it downloaded. Sometimes anti-cheat is not that deep but this one is. This is a kernel level anti-cheat, which is something that we're learning a lot of PC players vehemently hate. Uh, kernel level is kind of like uh, Android apps that have root access. It just means that the software is able to access anything, anywhere, including your passwords, your notes, your files, your, you know, special folder. Some people are even reporting that this kernel level anti-cheat software is staying in their systems even after they've uninstalled the game. That being said, Helldivers 2 looks pretty good. Didn't really know much about it before today, and now I'm geeked to play it. Well, the first game was a top-down, like, isometric-style shooter, mm -hmm. which I was definitely not into, and now this one is a third-person, like, roguelite dungeon crawler. It reminds me of, like, Risk of Rain mixed with The Revenant, mixed with Destiny, mixed with Warframe, mixed with... If you ever watch Starship Troopers, it's that, but in a video game. They got big bugs. They got big bugs that you shoot, and they got big bugs that are in the game. Despite the game being pretty good, the reviews are sitting at 53% mixed on Steam as the time of recording this, but it's still the third best selling game on Steam. There was no review embargo when we were trying to find any commentary on this. So many people were worried that it was gonna suck, but it looks pretty good. We wanted to get it straight from the horse's mouth. We went to a couple small streamers on Twitch and kind of asked them what their their general vibes were about the game and they, they seemed to like it. So cool, but scary. Don't want password gone. People are also complaining about a potential pay to win mechanic where the first Battle Pass is free. They're called War Bonds in this game, but the second Battle Pass is actually an extra $10. You can graduate through the first Battle Pass to get enough coins for the second Battle Pass, like a free-to-play game like Fortnite or Warzone, but this game costs $40. Work I mean, for your content, people. I mean, it takes 100 hours. <laughs> to complete the battle pass. I already paid for the game. I don't want to pay for it a second time. You know what? That's just being... That's quitter talk. You're right, I'm a quitter. All this being said, we don't know if the security issues extend beyond PC to PS5 just at this moment, but I'm sure we're gonna figure out in the coming days as reviews start to roll out for this bad boy. Let me tell you what, Des, what's that, Kyler, you say? <laughs> I say Helldivers 2. Some people are pretty salty about that, but I'll tell you what they're not salty about, and that's the live action Knuckles show that actually looks kind of good, apparently. What'd you think of it? Honestly, I'm a big Sonic fan, have been my whole life. It looks honestly really, really good. It's got the same visual fidelity for the characters that's the same as in the movies. And Knuckles got his hat. If you know, you know. I, I saw a little bit of it and the, the animation does look really good. I like seeing Tails in it. I don't know if Tails was in the movies. I didn't watch the movies. Tails was there wasn't. two movies? There's, there's going to be a third. All right, well, looks and Shadow's cool. in that one. Looks cool. Maybe this will give people a reason to buy Paramount Plus. Probably not though. But if all goes well, Sonic will have a solid future ahead of him. Him, but we have doubts about the future of Skull and Bones. Ugh. The beta just came out yesterday, and as the game finally approaches its actual release date, it's apparently suffering from the same problems as The Division 2, which is making players wait in line for drops and resources necessary to progress in the game. I remember that stuff going on with The Division 2, and there was photos of people waiting in line to go and get their things from, like, the base, like they were standing at the grocery store. I thought the game was about pirates. I don't know. Eve Garamo says that it's worth the $70, this game costs $70. It costs $70. And it has a battle pass. I said it before, I think, and it has a battle pass. And it has a, it's a Ubisoft game. Of course it has a battle pass. I've said it before. It'd be way funnier if the game just never came out. The beta is going on until the 11th of February. The game officially releases on February 16th. Hopefully they delay it again. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, but Skull and Bones may be finally close to being released, but we're probably, we're definitely not playing Subnautica 2 anytime this year. That is what's going on with Subnautica. Crafton released a financial report and it revealed that Subnautica 2, which was already announced, was going to be a live service game. And yay! And to the surprise of absolutely no one, no one was happy about this decision, except the actual developers had to come out and clarify that it's not a live service game. It's just a game that they're going to be working on for many, many years. I feel like the definition of a live service game is getting a little bit blurry, especially with the Game Awards last year, mm -hmm. where, uh, what, what I forget which game won for the ongoing support, but 
Yeah, it I know should. What you mean. Whatever one, I forget what it was, but it should have been Fortnite. Realistically, mm -hmm. as much as we want to hate on Fortnite, but so the way we found out about Subnautica 2 being a live service game was from their financial report. It was just like one line in the document, which directly contradicts what the devs have said about it not having a season pass, battle pass, or subscription. No word on microtransactions. We may not get to play Subnautica 2 until next year, but word on the street says that the Switch 2 could be revealed in as soon as a month. Apparently, a creator named Nate the Hate, who has been accurate in reporting the dates for Nintendo Direct events, uh, has finally gone on board claiming that the Switch 2 will be officially revealed in March. He put his name on this. We heard talk about an event happening in March as far back as Gamescom last year. Uh, Nate was among the first to start mentioning the Switch Pro model back in 2021. Uh, though those plans obviously never happened as the OLED came out, the Switch Pro was originally planned to release in 2021 or 2022 until Nintendo decided to pivot away from that in favor for their next-gen console. Going on top of all of this speculation is the fact that influencers have been traveling all day today. Uh, specifically Nintendo influencers. No one's really sure if that's supposed to be, you know, relating to the Switch 2, or if it's for the Princess Peach game that's coming out soon. Curious, very curious. Didn't something similar happen with Super Mario Bros. Wonder? I think so. But this solo dev on Twitter from Sucker Punch is taking it on his own shoulders to release this dinosaur game, and he just gave a new update about it. Gene Animate on Twitter is an animator for Sucker Punch, and he actually provided an update to this Dino Blade game that he's been working on for a while now, but it's fun to see new updates about it. He also retweeted this cool little video of, like, s a s potential Spider-Punk game animation set of him, like, jumping on people's heads. It's really cool. Uh, if you haven't seen the game, it's, like, dinosaurs with swords in their mouths, and they're flipping around and doing big anime moves. They got like giant swords and maces and all kinds of fun stuff. This new update video shows a bunch of dinos fighting, engaging in mortal combat in a forest. And it also shows the prehistoric reptiles can now wield a scythe. Mmm, fun. A scythe thing. We still don't know when to expect this game. It won't be soon. He's probably, it might never come out, but it's just fun to keep an eye on it. I want the game. But I bet you, bet you didn't expect to hear that Spyro and Crash. Don't tell me. They died. No! <laughs> Microsoft just laid off 1,900 total employees, of which 86 were actually working for Toys for Bob, which is the studio responsible for the Spyro Reignited trilogy and the new Crash Bandicoot game. Reignited trilogy is so good. Is it? It's so awesome. I, I need to play it. They're also a Call of Duty support studio, but basically in doing this, Microsoft single-handedly killed off Spyro and Crash Bandicoot. Of course, they could bring it back, but it, judging by the decision that they made here, it doesn't seem like that's their intention. That's my little fidget toy. Yeah. Now, one of the big controversies with this is that Microsoft specifically said during the initial acquisition of Activision, they were gonna be hands-off on their approach to how they maintain Activision. Laying off 1,900 people does not seem very- Hands-off. Laying off 1,900 people also doesn't seem like they're, you know, they have a lot of faith exactly. in the project. Spyro and Crash's IPs are both owned by Activision after a handful of acquisitions and are technically Xbox exclusives now that Activision is part of Microsoft. Basically, what just blew up in our face was our hope at getting a new Spyro game for the first time since 2008. And maybe that was wishful thinking to begin with. It's been a while. The layoffs also include 76 people at Call of Duty's development studio Sledgehammer Games. So because of Microsoft's initial claim during the acquisition that they would reduce areas of over overlap between Microsoft and Activision, because what they said is such a direct contradiction to what the company said on, in the court proceedings, uh, the FTC's coming after them. They're coming for them. Which sounds kind of goofy, but it could actually ultimately lead to the annulment of the acquisition between Microsoft and Activision. We'll just have to see. It seems like they opened such a large can of worms with whenever Microsoft decided to do this. Uh, ever since then, I feel like it's just been controversy after controversy after controversy, and honestly, it all is starting to blend together. I, I think I've heard FTC versus uh, Activision probably 200 times in the last, what, two years? It's a lot, but at the same time, Microsoft does seem like they know what they're doing. If they laid off so many employees and they are giving them severance packages that make sense, which kind of gives us the vibe that they know what they're doing. They are planning for something. It's not like they just up and fired everybody and they're not paying them. They are, they are spending a certain amount of money and planning for the future. So we'll, we'll see what they got. You know, greedy, evil Microsoft, yes, but like could, could be okay. 
this could all be okay. But definitely what will be okay is you after this video ends because this episode of Hot News Gaming is over. Bye people. Brett, I killed him. I ate his tongue.